Let's the day we decide not to. <laughs> sure. Let's call uh, uh, the meeting to order. And uh, I'm going to call on the secretary to uh, our chairman, Clay uh, Perkle, to uh, give uh, an invocation here. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Bow with me, if you will. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, you are gracious and kind and loving to us. I thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us. I thank you for the opportunities we have to serve this great state. And, Lord, I pray that you'll give us great wisdom uh, today uh, and in the, in the days to follow that we can uh, make this place an even better place to live and raise our families. Uh, Lord, you are so good to us. And at this point, we ask for wisdom. In your name I pray. Amen. Thank you, thank you uh, so much uh, for doing that. Um, before I, we go into the adoption of the committee rules, uh, I think all of you uh, know our analysts here. David has been with us now for several years, David Hartman. And where's the middle? Oh, this is uh, the intern, uh, and she has uh, been very helpful. And then we have over here, uh, Christy, I had to stop and think a minute, <laughs> and uh, so they are available to us, any uh, to any of you, uh, at, um, to help on any kind of issues or anything at the time. The first order of business will be the adoption of the committee rules. If you'll look inside your folder, there should be a, uh, uh, I'll give you a moment to look at the uh, rules there. Uh, do you have any? You, everyone's got a folder? Okay. And if you'll look at the rules for the session here for 21, 22, uh, 11 and 12 uh, has been added because of uh, uh, sometimes we may have to do the uh, virtual. And we do have some members that are not here today because they are sick. We have uh, uh, two members that are sick, and but not with COVID, but they are sick and they're not able to attend. And then we have two others that are in meeting, uh, as far as, as I know, and, and then I haven't heard from one other one uh, on that. So if you would look at the, uh, the rules for the State Properties Committee for this, this session. That time is now. Uh, I would uh, recommend that uh, we adopt the rules as printed and before us right now. I second. Okay, we have a, a motion to accept the rules, and we have a second to that. Any further discussion of the rules? If not, I'm going to call for the question. Those in, in favor of adopting the State Properties Committee rules, please signify by saying uh, yay. Those opposed? Very good. So we have adopted now the the rules for the uh, the committee, and uh, we are ready to look at one piece of legislation, and uh, that is House Resolution uh, 14. And if uh, I'm going to recognize Representative Al Williams to come up and and talk to uh, talk to you about House Resolution 14. And if you want to uh, speak to the bill, there's a sign-up sheet over here. And after we take care of Representative Williams, we will uh, uh, we will have one other item to take care of. Representative Williams, you are now recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much for having me and. Thank this committee for receiving me today. I'm here to present House Resolution 14. Let me say first, I, I'm certainly appreciative of those that have signed off on the bill. Uh, Speaker Ralston, Leader Burns, Leader Beverly, and Dean Smyre, uh, who is here with us, and I certainly thank him for all the support and information he has shared with me during the process of putting this resolution together. Uh, this resolution creates a national statutory hall collection replacement committee 
and of course it's outlined in the bill and I'm going to go over just a few of the items that make up the bill. This bill first and foremost, it, 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 it is resolved by the assembly uh, that we're honoring the life and memory of Representative, Representative John Lewis and approving the replacement of the state statue of Alexander Hamilton Stevens with a statue of Representative John Lewis in the National Statutory Hall Collection in the United States Capitol. Now, part of the process is to first create a committee. And this lays down the parameter for the replacement committee, committee to facilitate the replacement of the current statute. The members and officers of the committee, as a result, once this resolution is passed, it, the committee will be composed of eight members. The governor shall appoint four members of the committee and designate one of such members as chairperson. The lieutenant governor will appoint two members of the committee and the speaker of the house will appoint two members of the committee. And the duties of the committee is first and foremost to determine a suitable location in the state for placement of the Alexander Hamilton Stevens statue. Once that location has been decided upon, then it will be immediately transmitted to the governor, lieutenant governor, and speaker of the house the minutes of that meeting and uh, indicating such a location. Then a sculpture has to be created to, to create the statue of Representative Lewis and we will review, the committee will review and approve the plans of the new statue. Costs will be estimated that are associated with this statue including the cost for the, uh, for the sculpture to create the statue design for, for fabrication of the pedestal, transportation of the statue and pedestal to the United States Capitol, the removal and transportation of the replaced statue, temporary placement of the new statue in the rotunda of the United States Capitol for the unveiling ceremony, the unveiling ceremony and any other expenses that the committee determines are necessary to incur and then will identify a method for obtaining private funding to pay for all costs associated with the replacement of the statute. And the powers of the committee will be the ability to enter into contracts, memorandums of understanding and collaborative arrangements, seek, receive, and expend private funding for the cost for replacing the statute, and undertake all other lawful acts that are necessary to accomplish the objectives and purposes of this resolution. Of course, the chairman will be responsible for the call of all meetings and places and times, and effective power to perform its duties and accomplish the objectives. Now, of course, there will be no funding with the exception of elected representatives or senators associated with the work done here. And if they are state officials, of course, they will not be paid and private officials will not be paid. There is a sunset on this, and, and Mr. Chairman, meeting with the governor on yesterday, Dean Smarry and myself, we all agreed that the time established is not sufficient. Uh, December 1st, 21, sunset. Anybody that's been involved in anything that accomplished artists are involved in knows that it will take the artists sometimes to look at the picture from every direction that we have no idea what they're looking at. But by December, he might not have looked enough. So we're going to ask for an extension. We're going to amend this, hopefully, to at least June of 22, which would, would, would give us close to 18 months there. Um, now, it's important also that upon the committee's selection of a location in the state for the statue of Alexander Stevens, in this resolution is provided that the governor shall submit, submit a written request to the architect of the Capitol and the Joint Committee on the Library of Congress for approval of the placement of the statue of Alexander Hamilton Stevens with the statue of Representative John Lewis. Such requests shall include a description of the location in the state where the replaced statue will be placed after it's transferred to the state and a copy of this resolution authorizing the replacement. And if the request is approved by the Joint Committee on the Library of Congress, the state and the architect 
of the capital shall enter into agreement to carry out the replacement. The removal of the stature and the decision on where uh, Alexander Stevens' statue will be placed will have to be agreed upon by the governor, the lieutenant governor, and the speaker of the house. This place will be designated a proper place here in the state of Georgia. Let me, let me ask you a question, uh, two questions uh, on this. Uh, would it be, uh, if we finish up the, the resolution earlier, or just leave it December the 1st, 2022? Uh, or do you think June is sufficient? December 22 would, 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 would probably be much better because we can always sunset We've it all gone when we're completed. Yep. Yes, yep. of course. <coughs> All right, so uh, that'll be uh, one of your changes that you would like to see. Would like to right. see. And let me ask you about the other. To remove the, the statue in Washington mm -hmm. and bring it back to Georgia. Yes. This will be private funds that will be raised to do the removal. Yes, the, the private funds will include the removal and the replacement and all costs associated with it. Okay. All right. Uh, those are the two questions that I had. Do we have uh, questions uh, from the committee? <coughs> yes, sir. You recognize the vice chair. Th thank you, Representative. I want to ask just one question. Yes, sir. There were not really opportunities for anybody else to be on the list, or was there? I'm not assuming anything's why I asked the question. Like, for instance, resumes of other people. Or was it just how did we come around picking Congressman John Lewis? And I'm just asking because this morning I went through an hour and I've gone through about 10 hours of reading resumes for a college president that I'm about to <laughs> narrow it from 16 to 6. And I just always know that parameters in my business, I had resumes, and I just want to at least have a record of okay. asking that question. The original resolution that I was going to cite on to was – to replace that with a statue of Dr. King. Yes. There's already a statue in the capital of Dr. King, and, 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 and we certainly have one here at the Capitol. But because of the time, and it was right after Representative Lewis had passed, uh, after talking to several people, to include the speaker, I thought that um, Representative Lewis would be a good example. I did not want to Certainly, your, your list is fat, but your selection is well, going to be paid quite a bit more than the statue. You know? <laughs> so right. we didn't get into that. No. And there are, and there's a lot. I feel, number one, we're talking about Georgia. So when we look at Georgia, these, my number one thing that I look at is Georgia, people that are born here. I know Con Congressman Lewis wasn't born here, but served a lot of years representing his constituents, and, and that's valuable. And I don't... Mm -hmm kick that aside lightly. I do appreciate uh, the work and everything, but I just, uh, as you know, I have emails, I have constituents that ask questions, and of I'm course. just forwarding those questions there. And with these, you're right, they, he'll make more money, but Congressman did make a good bit of money for 34 years also, maybe not as much as No, this, he so. won't. About half of what you'll probably pay that <laughs> no, <laughs> president. Yeah. But again, thank you. I did want to ask those questions. Of course, and, and fair no questions. No intentions of anything except just you and I having a conversation. They are very fair questions and deserve to be asked and, and answered to the best of my ability. Thank you for the question. Um, are there other questions of the author? Yes, uh, you recognize uh, Representative Jody Lott, the governor's floor leader. Um, thank you again, Representative um, Williams. My question um, is similar to that of Representative Dunahoo. Um, I have received a number of contacts, emails, texts um, from community members, and their question, um, the question regarding this is similar. Um, how did we, I'm, surpri I, I'm, I'm slightly surprised that we're, we're doing the committee, but we've already made the decision. I do understand, I've read it, and I know that it's about kind of finding the sculptor and kind of going through the, the process, but there were others, and again, I know many of you know, 
and not we did not know this probably when you had this legislation drafted, but certainly Hank Aaron's name has come up a number of times as mm -hmm. being an incredible unifier mm -hmm. of the state. And I don't, um, I don't know how to say it, but I, I've heard that name a lot. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I have to stick with that. Um, politicians tend to not be considered unifiers mm -hmm. um, for all of us. I would, uh, I would say that fairly. And so I just wanted to put that out there that I, I know from my community there is um, a real desire to see a statue change and that this is a great idea. Um, but there is still consideration um, and, and maybe it's just my community, but they're not generally <coughs> fans of promoting politicians. <laughs> it is what it is. So um, I'd just like to say thank you and make that point um, mm -hmm. for the record. Well, I, I can certainly appreciate your, your, your concerns there, Representative. Uh, the thing was that almost all of, or all of Representative Congressman Lewis's time was spent in Georgia. He was headquartered in Georgia before he was ever elected to office, from city council to congressman. He's always been, the whole time in Congress, has been in Georgia. And the way Georgia is shaping up and, and I have the utmost respect for Henry Aaron and his memory because I heard someone mention it the other morning on the floor. I was sitting in front of a little black and white TV in 1957 mm -hmm. when he played in the World Series for the Milwaukee team, Milwaukee Braves. So, but when we talk about location, Henry Aaron was not a Georgian either. <laughs> he was also from Alabama. So, you know, sometimes we've grown so much. 20 years from now, when we look around, most likely folk would have come here. Thank God this is a place where people gravitate toward, did not consider where a person was born. Hank Aaron spent all of his life in southwest Atlanta as a homeowner, a businessman here, but he was an Alabama native. And when we really go in to pick him, I promise you, there are literally hundreds of people. And I understand the feelings of politicians, but thank God they keep reelecting us. <laughs> you know, and I had a guy say, everybody hates Congress except their congressman. So, you know, we, we've learned to live with that. Um, to the vice chair again. And again, Hank Aaron was one I remember growing, and while you were watching on television, I was being born that night about 11.59. So, um, you know, I remember those stories also. I, I was looking at, like, Andrew Young. There's other people we have, too, and that's why I was just talking about the resumes, nothing to, uh, yes. to you know, anything against Congressman Lewis. And that yeah. I want to make clear. But I started thinking, well, here I am. I go through processes and have done oh, yeah. thousands of resumes in my life looking through them, and I take the vetting process serious. And, and I do like the way it is covered. The questions <coughs> I would ask that's clear in here, mm -hmm. private funding. Mm -hmm. I can answer people it's not funded by the state through mm -hmm. taxpayer dollars. So those are things that I like. Uh, I'd love to be on the committee. Mm -hmm. um, That'd be interesting. But with that, I appreciate the receptiveness of the questions. I just thought we would have the parameters of having 10 people there, eight people, and then you make a decision on a committee. And, you know, I've had a lot of emails, and mm -hmm. I told them I would ask those questions. And, you know. Fair questions. Yes, sir. And let me remind you that Ambassador Young was a Louisiana native. I know. Born in, in New Orleans. <laughs> so, and, and for the 57 game, we're privileged because uh, Dean Smyre was grown and probably bought a beer. He was at the game in 57. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any, uh, any other questions of the author? Let me make sure that everyone understands now the procedure for uh, how the, uh, once the uh, commission is formed, they will notify, it will be, uh, Congress will be notified of the commission. And then once a, uh, the commission has established a, a replacement, if this, if this resolution passes, then uh, the process will begin. Well, just a little 
different, uh, once there's some meetings and a decision has been made, then Congress, the, 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 the Library of Congress and the Statutory Hall Committee will be notified at that time by the governor. Okay. And then they would approve or disapprove the letter from the governor, and then we move forward. Yep. Uh, so a letter has to come from the governor for the for it to be uh, Re- for the Library of Congress to yes set for requesting requesting the change because they have final authority over everything in statutory okay. law. Uh, and the way government moves as slow as it does, I think we are twenty three might be a better. T- <laughs> 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 no, I think we we've, we've got it established now. Um, Representative Buckner. Text. Well, the question is about when they r- remove um, Alexander Hamilton Stevens's statue and bring it back to Georgia. Will will the likely place? I know it, it says in here clearly that it will be the governor, lieutenant governor, speaker of house, and a committee. Will there won't be any restriction from it coming to the capital is the question I was asked, this capital. No, there will, no be, there will not be restrictions any place in Georgia. When the recommendation is made by the committee, mm-hmm. the governor, the lieutenant governor, and the speaker will have to sign off on the recommendation for what we're doing with the statue. Once that's done, it will be established where the statue will be placed. And as I um, understand that it has to be that has to be worked out with the Library of Congress before the statue is moved. Yes, the, the Library of Congress has to approve the removal and replacement. And the uh, prior to that, the committee is going to have to submit recommendations for where Alexander Stevens' statue will be placed, and that will also have to be approved by the governor, lieutenant governor, and the speaker. And it has to be a suitable... I think the has to, has to be a suitable uh, a location. Location. Sorry, no, have to be a suitable location. Okay. Yes, uh, Chairman Perkle. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, one thing that's been brought up here uh, today is the the honoring of of uh, Georgians. I'll use the air quotes there, uh, Georgians for uh, Statuary Hall. Um, I, I think that uh, one of the things that we should not forget is that neither Congressman Lewis uh, nor um, Hank Aaron had a choice as to where they were born. Um, and they did have a choice of where they lived. Uh, so as far as being Georgian, um, I, I don't think that because you were not born in the state, you can't be a great Georgian. Uh, and so that certainly would not disqualify. I do echo some of the sentiments of, of my colleagues that I, I do have, um, uh, I don't know that it would be concerns, but um, the, the precedent that we're setting, um, although Alexander Stevens uh, was, a, um, was a politician, uh, and so um, uh, Mr. Aaron uh, was not, uh, and Mr. Uh, Congressman Lewis uh, was. But I just wanted to make the point that um, neither gentleman uh, had a choice in where they were born. They did have a choice where they chose to raise their family and make a difference. Uh, well noted there. Thank you. Uh, that's the reason I'm from Cuthbert, Georgia, and, uh, <laughs> you know, I didn't have a... Uh, <laughs> But I, I chose to stay there, and, uh, and that made a difference uh, in my life uh, in that. Uh, do we have any uh, other questions of the author? Do we have anyone else that would like to speak <coughs> to the, uh, to the um, resolution? Okay. <laughs> I think he's done a good job of uh, bringing it forth there. Thank you. Yeah, are there any other questions on uh, uh, before we take a vote? Uh, if you'll note in your rules that you adopted, uh, 
it uh, says no action shall be taken on a bill or resolution at its first presentation to the committee unless the chairperson directs otherwise. And I am directing that we go ahead and vote on, on this particular. We do not have a substitute. We do not have anything. So I'm asking you to uh, consider uh, this resolution, House Resolution 14. Do I have a motion? Motion do pass. I have a motion that for a do pass. Yes. Okay. And we have a second. Now we have uh, we've got the main bill out of the way. Now we need to do uh, the how do we want to handle the change in the date uh, to December the first, twenty twenty two. All right, we have a motion and we have a second. Do we have uh, any discussion on this? Okay. Uh, who is that? Second. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, we have a motion and a second uh, for the change to, and if you will just allow us to go ahead and make that uh, into a sub. Yes, please. Uh, we can do that. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Let, uh, now we'll call for the question. All those in favor of the... Oh, yep. Yeah. All those in favor of the amendment, please uh, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Yes. Okay. We have uh, one no on that. So noted. Uh, in the the general here, and so that is now ready for the the main question uh, for House Resolution 14 as amended. Uh, those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. And those opposed? No. All right. So uh, the ayes have it, and House Resolution 14 is on its way to rules. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you. Thank y'all. Okay. And thank you. Wait a minute. Uh, we're not through now. We, we still got a little, little more business here. Uh, would you ask uh, Representative uh, Bucknut for Frank and them to come in? When the news media started leaving, I was getting ready to go too. <laughs> I don't think we have any new members that uh, are here. Uh, we have our same state properties folks here. Um, Marty, you want to in introduce everyone? Exactly. Uh, we got Frank Smith, uh, Deputy Executive Director of State Properties Commission, and Gerald Pilgrim, same position with the Georgia uh, Building Authority. And of course, you know, our, our he sort of looks out for us in so many ways and you'll notice in your uh, folders that there's a listing of the everything that we we passed out last year and uh, they've sort of cons made a concise thing for you to look and see what has happened to it and uh, um, you can take a look at that if you have any questions uh, Frank and them will be happy to answer any questions on that the other thing that I have asked them to do is to talk about uh, our new addition around the Capitol. <laughs> and, uh, and they're going to talk to you very briefly about the, uh, the uh, fence that's being placed around the Capitol.
Thank you. Uh, you want to? You gonna be the lead well, person? Actually, Mr. Pilgrim will. Uh, okay. Marty and I have a, a Senate committee to to run to at, at four o'clock, but we wanted to come. So you were serious. We were serious. <laughs> yes, sir. Sorry, but certainly wanted to come say hey. I don't know why we we ran off the media, but um, good 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 to see you guys and uh, your old it, news. Yeah. <laughs> if, if there's any questions, we're happy to right, uh, address. Thank you. Them. Well, thank you. we're gonna turn it over then to thank y'all for coming. I'm gonna let sure, y'all slip you. out. And uh, thank y'all for putting all of this together for us. Okay, uh, Mr. Pilgrim, we are ready. We were ready for you, sir. And uh, Chairman, thank you, members, of the committee. Thank y'all for having us. I think everybody should have a copy of the little presentation here in front of you. I uh, kind of want to give you a little bit of a background to it. Is um, in October, I think many of y'all are aware. In October 2000, y'all may, may be able to hear me a little bit better, so I apologize. October 2019, uh, the Capitol did have a break-in. Uh, after the break-in, we had we had a pretty good bit of damage that was involved with the uh, second floor and on the third floor around the Secretary of the Senate's office. Quite a bit of damage, a lot of glass broken, um, some some other property damage. Some of the photos were uh, the paintings were damaged. We were able, fortunately, could have been a lot worse. No one was heard except for the gentleman who broke the glass. He decided to take off his shoes and run through the Capitol, and we had a, quite of a mess there. Um, but we started looking at ways to improve Capitol security with the Department of Public Safety. Uh, we were looking at, you know, things of improvements, better locks, some better lighting, some removing some of the uh, the landscaping outside because he was using some of some of our landscape materials was used to help try to break into the door. So we were looking at little small things with the focus on a single person or a small group of people trying to gain entry into the building, and usually typically after hours. Um, then late May 2020 showed up. And uh, at that point we had, you know, we experienced something that we've fairly used to protesters and people expressing their opinions, um, but we had crowds that have, were a little bit more angry there was some vandalism. We actually had vandalism to just right behind where the King statue is outside. Uh, the Capitol was spray painted. Uh, then there were also a lot of uh, statements that were being made, a lot of on social media and in other areas about people wanting to occupy the Capitol, um, cause more property damage. And most concerning to us is that, you know, we're afraid about people that work up here and the safety of the the building, there's a lot of stuff that can't be replaced, but we sure don't want employees or visitors to be, be harmed. Um, so that's when we went with Department of Public Safety. We installed the small barricade that, you know, the unattractive barricade that surrounds the building. This helped diffuse some of the situation, but this helped along with a large number of state troopers, the Capitol Police, Department of Natural Resource and Corrections officers along with National Guard personnel, which have been basically on site full time and at weekends and at nights since May of 2020. Um, this is not sustainable. There, there, one of the reports that uh, back in the fall was that the National Guard was spending about 200 and something thousand dollars a month on staffing personnel to make sure the Capitol was protected at night. Um, you know, they have other jobs, they have other things they should be doing, there should be other use of, of state, you know, the taxpayers hard earned dollars. So what could we do to lessen the manpower, the, 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 just the labor burden on the state to help give some protection to the building? And the, the temporary fencing did work, so that kind of got us to, you know, you know, installing a fence. The goal was to secure the capital, but we also needed it to be visually attractive toward the building. Uh, that was one of the mandates that when we presented this to the governor and to the House and Senate leadership, I think they all agreed that that was, they don't want anything, that they just don't want an ugly fence around the building. And so we kind of get into there. If you go to page two, we'll kind of describe how the fence will be. The red is kind of the fencing. You'll see there'll be permanent gates at the three corners where we have statues. There's gates that'll be locked there that typically there's not a lot of traffic in there. They're not very well accessible from the road anyway. They're more accessible from the interior of the, pro of the grounds. 
Uh, so we have those that will be there that we could open if we need to that can be unlocked in the days. Then there will be large gates at all the stairwells um, surrounding the building. So we kind of have that, and that's kind of where the access is. Uh, there will be some handicapped improvement accessibility that will also use this time to help improve some of the ramping systems and things like that. So kind of secures the building on where we are. Page 3 shows you kind of a rendering of the fence, how it will look from Washington Street. The fence sits 18 inches back from the existing wall. It'll be eight feet high from the base from the, the base of the wall. Um, it, it's kind of uh, it's kind of an interesting. This is taken. You know, when people say we're installing a fence, they wonder why it's not up in a month. But we want this to make sure it's there for the next hundred plus years, and it's got to be secured. So you'll have a cantilevered wall system for the foundation. So you have that poured into the ground. It'll go down. It'll be below the sidewalk levels in most places. Um, what that'll do is give reinforcement that with pulling and tugging on the uh, fence, it won't tip over, they won't come down. In addition, with each post will be anchored to the foundation. There will be a steel plate throughout the foundation, and each individual picket will be welded in place. Um, they'll come in 10-foot and 20-foot sections, depending on the span that we have. Uh, the 20-foot sections weigh approximately two tons. So 10 foot's a ton per every 10 feet. Uh, they're very well made. They're actually hand ground to the, the top of the, you'll notice at the top it says anti-climb uh, tool, and that's where it becomes to a point at the top. Uh, I think our architect calls it um, Millennials to make it a real fancy word, but it's just a sharp point at the top that, you know, once you get to that level, it's it's very would be very difficult to climb, and it's at eight feet. So, there's also some unusual. You know, we have some interesting characteristics of the ground. On the next page, you'll see with the beautiful trees that we have on property. We've had an arborist there the entire time this project has been going on while they're while they're digging and what we've done in those areas and then also along the wall that goes on Capitol Avenue toward Liberty Plaza because of the height, we have actually installed helical piers. So it'll be a piered system with the foundation poured on top of that uh, that'll be there to secure it in there. The piers are going at the ground anywhere between 55 and 80 feet. So again, we don't want this in a couple of years. You come back and look to me because we've had some foundation shifts or things like that. These are going to be there. And so they'll be there for the long term. The next one kind of shows you kind of the corner from MLK, uh, MLK and Piedmont. Um, this is where we don't want it to detract from the building. So we want it to, this is kind of the street view, visually how it will look. If you look at the next page on page six, it's a little bit closer. Each post will be uh, four and three quarters inches apart. So you do still get the view of the monuments, of the building. So we're very, the architect has really done a good job to keep that. So we want to keep it open. We want to keep the open feel. And then we kind of go to page seven, kind of how this is on a typical day, um, how Washington Street will look during the day. Uh, you'll have the open area that will be there. It's, we had a four foot fence that was along Washington Street you know, with the little areas there, just with no gates in that. So it now becomes an eight foot. And then on the one of page eight is once it's closed, kind of how it will look. Now this would be if there's a reason why they have to, DPS has to close it during the day, if there's something that's going on. Or after, I think they said it after 10 o'clock at night, they're looking at possibly closing the gates then. Uh, that's why the grounds are closed, those type stuff kind of reduces in any kind of traffic so we don't have the end of like a lone individual coming in because if there's a large event they usually are going to know about that a little bit ahead of time but to keep the building safe so um, let, me, let me stop you yes, right sir. there looking at the the closure there um, those are gates that are swinging out or no or sir the, they'll actually they'll actually there's two there'll be two on that that'll actually um, go in and they'll be kind of hung in behind the existing fence so it'll be kind oh, of they'll, uh, they'll set bend they'll slide gates 
that'll kind of go from the top. That's the reason you'll see those kind of looking like columns, the yep. black columns. Yep. That's what's supporting it. So they'll slide back in there. So there'll be um, at the front, I believe, they're 30 foot, two 30 foot sections. So these are mechanically operated. mechanically closed. So at night, an officer will go by and then have to physically close it with, you know, his card and a key to be able to close it to make sure they're safe and no one's caught in between the gates. And this is all the way around the Capitol. Yes, sir. That it, it, it will be closed in that, and if if a member of the house wanted to come in a little bit there, later. There'll be two entrances. Um, th like um, there'll be two entrances. There'll be one that will be the um, existing handicapped entrance on the MLK side. Yep. Um, people that staff members and members of the General Assembly that have access to the Capitol like they do now will have access to that gate. They'll be able to go into a side gate there, or they'll be able to access it on the um, Mitchell Street Capitol Avenue side, or, or yeah, Capitol Avenue side. Where, uh, they'll, where the guard shack is, there'll be a gate there for members to be able to access into the building. And just like they do on anything else, swipe the card, open the gate, come on into the building. You need All right, you, you recognize. Yes, sir. What, um, if you're looking at the fence, and I understand the top part of eight feet, climbing over, somebody getting hurt. So if we prepared for lawsuits when that person does do that and they are injured, I, it's one of those things where that's one that we're, we're you know, we always are, we always have the potential of lawsuits. We've yes. consulted with our legal department, the attorney general's office. I mean, we have to protect our grounds. Like with anything, you know, the gentleman that broke into the building that night when he broke the glass could have potentially sued us for breaking glass and cutting himself. So did did something? Did he? go to jail or yes sir he was uh, the last I heard he was uh, still in jail uh, he had several other charges he may have we may have been fortunate enough to be able to ship him back off to North Carolina with some other charge he had some more serious charges there so uh, but he was he did quite a bit of damage he bit, it was about thirty thousand dollars worth of damage that he did but I think you know it's one of those things where we were able to repair the damage repair the portraits everything was able to be taken care of but I think it was a good lesson for us to be able to know that we had that okay. that point that we we did we weren't aware that we had that weakness thank you representative the question the question was answered I had the same concerns that you had as far as members being able to access the capital after hours or after the gates were closed oh no sir members definitely want to make sure we're not going to try to impede any of the progress of the, of the work that y'all are doing uh, just kind of a little bit of about give y'all a little bit of the timeline so y'all yeah, do know because that may be uh, hopefully um, I'm gonna knock on wood so I would not but on the 15th of this month the foundation system will be complete at that point in time we will start working on the irrigation we're going to use this as a time to be able to put in some new landscaping in the capital those type of stuff so some improvements that our landscape uh, director have been wanting to do with some lighting electrical and landscaping so That'll be done between uh, now and then March the 8th is when the fence sections will be starting to be delivered and they'll be um, starting to be installed on the 8th. I'm sorry, they'll be delivered the week of the 1st, but installed starting the 8th. Kind of a little bit about the pricing. Um, the building authority um, has budgeted $5 million, but that includes the fence. We're also building a command center um, for the DPS at night where they'll be able to have like a command center at night that have the videos it'll sit on the existing site of the um, where the dumpsters are so it's going to take that foundation we're not going to have any additional we'll remove the little small guard shack there so they'll have operational controls a little more security a little bit better access and that's where a lot of money will go into the fence the guardhouse but then also improving some of the additional cameras additional things like that so they can be able to have an individual that can co help coordinate if there is an incident or if there's a if there is just a health emergency we'll be able to work those type things too there and that those funds came from GPS uh, the sale of 11 Murphy Avenue which was a GBA property that was an old warehouse that had sat there for a long time yeah. so those were those were for our surplus property and we dedicated all those funds to that yeah we had heard uh, rumors to that effect and that's uh, it was going to be another question that uh, 
where did these funds come from? Yes, we, come. we were very, very fortunate that uh, we were able to sell that piece of property. We were able to get appraised value from that, from um, the green, uh, the belt line. And so they purchased that property. It's a pretty uh, hot area for them. And then we were able to do that and then dedicate this. So we were not able to have to come and beg for additional funds from the state or anything like that from, from y'all on this. So. Well, Representative Buckner, I think it looks better than what you and I uh, thought it was going to look. That it, uh, if this is a good, and it seems like it's, uh, yeah. It, it, it is something that we're, we're proud of, that that was one of the mandates and, you know, the mandates that we've got that, you know, with, because everybody is proud of, proud of the facilities. We have a beautiful building here, beautiful, uh, the landscaping, I, I it doesn't look beautiful this month and this week, but it's usually in very good shape. So we wanted it to fit in and not detract from that and have something that y'all would be proud of, but also leave it to be open. So it is, it is the people's house. We are very aware of that. And um, with everything that happened, it was a good, we, we were fortunate that with some of the stuff that happened this summer, not to have anything, but it got us a little bit of, of what could happen Sure. And the, we saw the worst case scenario in Washington, and we were thankful we had already started. We just were sorry it was not up. Mm -hmm. so. um, Chairman Perkle. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and I, I thank you for your last comment. That's uh, kind of a segue with where I was going because this is a people's house. Uh, and and the a question in my former life, I was uh, had to do. I was in Washington D.C. Uh, a good bit, and and back in the day, of course, I'm I'm getting on up there now. But back in the day. We used to go and, and have lunch on the steps of the Capitol. And 9-11 stopped all that because of the, the dangers and the security risk. And I understand we're living in a different age. And it's a long way to get to my point. Um, because this is a people's house and the seat of government, uh, do you know if there is plans for um, gates being left open so families can come uh, and I know the, the, the capital is not accessible to the public on the weekend, but they can walk around the grounds on the weekends now and see the, see the uh, you know, do a little school trip on the weekend. Uh, you know, homeschool group will like to see who we are honoring. We had talked earlier in this session about the, the people that we're honoring in Washington, D.C., but those that we honor around around the grounds here. Do you know if there's something in place that will still allow um, – the free access to the grounds on the weekends or is it going to be you know seven to five monday through friday no sir i mean the goal is to be able to have access for the weekends because like you uh i'm, I'm probably a little bit older than you but in the i, I uh, got got fortunate enough to do an internship in uh, washington and enjoyed they'd let me have free access to the capitol and the grounds and be able to do those type of stuff and then came back and did some back in the late 80s and was doing little internships up here and just loved being able to have access to buildings. So no, sir, we want to be able to share share this beautiful piece of property with, with the people that pay for it. Uh, the, the goal is then at evenings to, for them to be able to close it so the manpower would not be as much on the Department of Public and, Safety. And that's understandable. So, uh, but, but I do thank you for, the, no, sir, for we, minimizing this disruption, not just of families gathering there uh, and, and kids learning about Georgia history, uh, but man, uh, you minimize the disruption, the visual disruption that could have been from trying to secure this facility. We have a um, we have the statue of uh, President Carter out front, and it's one of those things where, with all the statues and and with um, Martin Luther King Jr. statue, but with um, we were very proud that last year or back last spring we were able to finally plant peanuts in those areas. So if you see the the little growth there. So we do want people to come and enjoy that and see the peanuts and watch us be able to grow that. So, yes, sir. So right you now actually with have the, peanuts with planted? The but don't harvest them. Really? So we, we, do have, we do have peanuts that are around there finally uh, around, the, around the statue there. But little things Thank like that, that. There's, little, <laughs> there's little visuals that we want everybody to come and be able to enjoy. So, yes, sir, I, I agree with you, Representative uh, Chairman. I, I agree with you 100% on that. Thank you. So Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, I want to t uh, thank you for bringing the presentation, and I think uh, this gives us a better understanding of uh, where we're headed, uh, and the timeline is, is something that, uh, you know, we look forward to this finished product and, and everything, and I, uh, and I appreciate the members uh, wanting to 
uh, hear about this and uh, thank y'all for making it available to us and and uh, if you'll tell Marty we appreciate uh, everything that was done here we'll do this in chairman and, and, and on the, on our on my other job with the building authority too and if there's anything that we can do to help y'all or help y'all if y'all have any needs anything with you there I think hopefully y'all have seen some difference in some of the janitorial and other types we of have. areas and things like that and uh, we have a very good staff that's dedicated to that you but do. we want to make sure that we we continue to provide the services that y'all y'all need to be able to get the people's work done thank you so much and are there any questions uh, before we adjourn absolutely thank you well, well thank you it's it's been a, a learning experience for all of us so uh, it seems like uh, March the 13th was a long time ago <laughs> last year. So, Very long time ago, and we hope it'll be in the rearview mirror very, very soon. On that. Thank you so much.